Hello, 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 hello from San Giovanni Rotondo. Hello from San Giovanni Rotondo. I am Brady White, your host. Welcome. Today and every day I try and show a different part of San Giovanni Rotondo. And sometimes I travel outside, maybe to uh, a city in Europe, maybe a city in America, someplace different in the world that is connected with Padre Pio. Well, I hope today that you will sit back, enjoy, and watch Hello from San Giovanni Rotondo. Well, today uh, we have heard some very beautiful words, exciting words, um, interesting words, and I'm going to ask our friend Father David to help me out with the day's journey. Hello again, Father David. Thank you so much for helping me and helping the people that are going to hear this on Hello from San Giovanni Rotondo. How about giving us some, some sort of a little bit of a cap to today, the words and the lessons that we were, mm, we were spoken to about? whether it be this morning, speaking with uh, our friend, um, um, Father, Rupnik. Father Rupnik, Marco Rupnik, and then later in the day, uh, speaking to this beautiful uh, Indian bishop. He, he, the thoughts were similar, but different. Can you give us a, a cap for the day, Father? Yeah, yeah. The, the, what's, what was different about uh, the bishop, is Archbishop Thomas, was um, he, he has an experience, and that came out much more in the questions and answers after, after his actual talk. He has an experience of being able to listen to people and, and to really respect them. And uh, the, the most important thing in my mind that I'm listening, and he says, well, this is the Christian response, you know. And, and, and uh, the Christian response, again, is not just caught up in ideas or uh, in, in an empty sense, but it's, it's like in, in fleshed. It's, it's alive. And so you, you can see that his ability to listen to others is, is tremendous. Um, he talked about actually being able to uh, establish a mission in areas that, uh, that were, had no, no Christians. And people were very worried about him going into that area because they, uh, they were afraid that, that, that he would I guess, proselytize or he would somehow force people into, into the Christian religion. And, uh, but they were able to open the place to him after he was able to very much listen to them, show them how much he respected them, uh, begin on a common ground, and, and then begin to introduce ideas uh, that come from our faith too, as, as life-giving. And, and in doing it in, in this way, uh, people were able to be, uh, to be open. So it's very clear that he's, he's working from, from that uh, perspective of, of, a, of a faith that, that's alive in him. Uh, the other thing is, because uh, the question came up, well, this seems to be very Asian, as comes from, from your culture. And uh, he was saying, you know, first, I think he acknowledges, he, he was talking about the difference between Asian cultures and a lot of Western cultures that are, the West, everything's very secularized. There's a separation made between things that are spiritual and non-spiritual and people looking at, in the world and in ways in which they don't recognize uh, God's, God's presence in the same way. But, but he, said, uh, uh, the pe he said the people in, in, in India are very much more spiritual. There's not the same kind of uh, secularization that's going on here in the West. And, uh, and yet, uh, as, as he uh, talked about that, he's, he, he basically said, well, this is something that, that in, in a sense, uh, comes easier for, for him. Uh, the people there have a natural ability to, the, to, to listen to each other. And, uh, and yet it's clear that, he, that he, he, he does this, whatever, but he also roots it in, in the Christian faith. In, in the end, you know, his culture helps him, give him a, a, a natural, possibly a natural disposition to, to some of this. But uh, it's, it's more than that. You can see that it's more than that in, in his, in his uh, particular experience because he's able to take, take the gospel too and, and insert that in his experience of faith. Our father, you know, he kept 
going back and forth to the fact that he never really found an enemy, that he never found someone that he couldn't uh, be a friend with. Uh, there was one direct question, and uh, it was a very strong question, but yet he came around and said that he has never found that. And the idea that the doors were open to him. It is similar to St. Francis uh, in his effect when he was um, connected with the Sultan. I mean, it was very similar. This is what hit me. Right, right. Yeah, if you think about it, uh, God, God has no enemy either. <laughs> uh, someone, someone God who, has no enemy. Yeah, I mean, someone who has, has the spirit of, of Jesus Christ uh, is going to, to look at people with, with particular eyes. Uh, it is true that Jesus said, and somebody had asked that question, well, didn't Jesus say at one point, get behind me, Satan, and didn't, didn't he say at another point, you brood of vipers, and he didn't respond to this, but I was thinking, yeah, but he did not say this, Jesus did not say this, for example, to the Gentiles, to the Greeks, to the enemies, he said it to his own people, in fact, uh, one of them he said to Peter, <laughs> the one that he would put in charge of the church, the other one he said to, to, the, to the Jews, Jewish leaders, and the reason why was because these were people of faith who were listening to the devil. So who knows, maybe Jesus was talking really to the devil that was present there. But it was possible to do because he, he knew these people. He was already in relationship with them. So he, he could do this. Uh, I think what's so key in what the bishop was saying is that this is all about relationship. Uh, and that, that uh, uh, you know, we see others as having a relationship with us Really, that is in Christ. And if we can acknowledge that relationship, then we can listen to them, we can take the time to speak to them, etc. If we have, let me see if I'm getting this uh, right from your take. If we have a relationship, uh, a, a true relationship with Christ, then we are able to go out and evangelize that we can connect with our brothers and our sisters. Is this something to what you're saying, am I on? I think it's true, yeah. They were talking in some of the earlier talks, you know, they, they talked about the Trinitarian model, which, which essentially means that, that it's never just Christ or God or the Holy Spirit, they're always together. And in our relationship with them too, the, there's, a, it, there's a community there, there's a community in the church. The, the way that we spread the good news is not as individuals announcing uh, a truth or a position or anything else. We, we come as members of a community, and we also recognize that everyone we, we're in contact with are called to the same relationship. No matter what they believe, they, they still have this relationship. Um, Father, during this conference, uh, I, I noticed that uh, many of the priests, uh, the lay people also, but the many of the priests seem to be really um, are touched by the words of Rupnik, uh, by um, Bishop Marini, by the bishop here today, at uh, Tommaso. Um, is it, do you feel it's benefiting the, 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 um, the priests, the frati, the um, capuchins, the priests that are here, is it? I, I think so, I mean, it's, it's calling us to, to step back and see, well, because uh, we might have come with the idea, well, what, uh, how do we use confession in a way that, that it can be a source of evangelization of the people? And what's, what's touching me anyway, I think could be touching other people, is I need to look at my own conversion, or my own experience of relationship with God, and how this itself needs to be renewed. And in fact, in the, in the bishop's talk, which he didn't get to the end, I had the paper, I had the actual paper, so I know what was at the end. He, he has a couple things at the end, and, and one of them talks about this, that the first step is for the conversion of the, of the person, of, the, of us, the priests, whatever, that are here, for us to look at evangelization in our own lives, the relationship with God in our own lives. And then we can begin, really, to, to reach out to the people in an even more, in an even more beautiful way. So I think priests are realizing that, that this is not just something that we do, or in, like, there's no technique, there's nothing like this, but it has to do with the relationship that we have to have with others, which first begins with our own relationship with God. Uh, really, it's individual. Uh, it is an individual uh, for each priest uh, hearing confession. Uh, it is all individual when uh, dealing with a, a soul, uh, when they are in the confessional. But not only in the confessional, correct, Father? It is really on the street, it's in the rectory, it's on, uh, it's in, on a campus, it's on a bus. 
This is what um, I think the bishop was saying. Yeah. I mean, that it's not only in the confessional, it's in our daily life and out and about. Right, right, because we reach out to everyone. And this new evangelization, yes, it's, it's for people who, who uh, were evangelized before and somehow forgot or somehow were, were not touched in the right way. But in, in order to reach out to, we have to reach out to everyone. And if we reach out to, to everyone with this, this uh, knowledge of this importance of this relationship, uh, this is what God desires. And uh, reaching out to everyone doesn't only mean uh, born-again Christians or Catholics. It does mean meeting someone on the street and talking with them. The, now, this is just my own way. Uh, when I'm out in the world, uh, my opportunity, the door opens when they ask my work, I tell them my work. And then um, they say, oh, you know, what else do you do? I say, I live in Italy. There the door is open. Oh, well, oh you live in Italy? Where? San Giovanni Rotondo. What is that? Uh, that is a place where a saint, I, right away I don't start pushing, I just happen to where Saint uh, Padre Pio, uh, he had the stigmata of Christ, the wounds of Christ, for 50 years. A lot of miracles uh, happened through him. Now, whether the person, again, is in a high station in life or a, a lowly station, you know, I talk, I talk with everyone. I feel very happy and content with myself that I do try and, and uh, treat all equal. And, but that opportunity then, the person says, um, oh, is he, what, uh, what is the wounds of Christ? I say, you know, when he was nailed to the cross. Now, sometimes the dialogue continues. Sometimes they turn away. At that point, if they turn away, I leave it alone. I thought it was really similar to maybe what he was saying. Maybe another opportunity will come for me and I can, I can speak again. But many times, people are curious, even the ones that don't even know the word stigmata. So it opens the door. Uh, this is a way for a lay person, along with the, um, the religious, to do, am I being foolish, Father, or is it, is it just a way, does it, it seem so simple or so childlike? Or? I would run with it if I were you. Uh, <laughs> I would what? Run with it. I would run with it, yes. Yeah, whatever yeah. works for you, right? Whatever, whatever works, you know, and, and God uses you in, in that way. Uh, yes. he, he's talking to priests who do a lot of this work and at times aren't as effective, and he's saying you need to listen more. Is basically what he's saying. There's the key. Father, and I am listening to you, and those of us, uh, those who are watching, hello from San Giovanni Rotondo, I know are listening. Thank you again, and I hope that we speak maybe tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Father. Okay, Thank bless. you, Father David. God yeah. bless you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Now, each day, and each time we close, hello from San Giovanni Rotondo, I always like to pray the Hail Mary, the prayer that Padre Pio loved so very much. And you know, he knew that by going to our Blessed Mother, by asking for her intercession, that it was very difficult for Jesus to deny his mother anything. Please join me now for your intentions. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Grace, pray for us. St. Peel, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, you can always contact us at PadrePioInfo at AOL.com. Again, PadrePioInfo at AOL.com. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye.